Hello, and welcome back to Mortals and Portals, a Pathfinder Real Play Podcast. I am your host and GM, Zach, and joining me, as always, is... Adam, and I play Jules, an Azar Ketty Bard. I'm Joel, and I play Dax, a Kobold Rogue. I'm Ryan, I play Ryu, a Tiefling Magus. Taryn, and I play Waltz, a Human Champion. Excellent. Well, last time on Mortals and Portals, the party made their final preparations for their journey to Pegos, which included an adorable little shopping trip and leveling up to level two and saying goodbye to everyone in the town of Karos. So they saw them off and they grabbed onto Geldir and they headed into the wilderness. And their first encounter was with some Drake Knights rolling down the road in a wagon that had a hippogriff in the back, which they seemed to be tormenting. So Waltz and Jules took offense to that and decided to come up with a little scheme to free the Hippogriff, which included Waltz having just a full-on conversation with some Drake Knights and managed to convince them that he too was a Drake Knight, and I think he befriended them in the way. And during that time, Jules freed the Hippogriff with a very good use of the Unseen Servant spell, and it took off into the wilderness. And then Waltz said goodbye to his new friends who headed back to Scale Keep. The party rendezvoused, realized they lost track of the Hippogriff, uh, you know, gave each other a couple jabs, uh, made made fun of Geldir or so on. Then they decided to make camp as the sun was going down. And after a little bit of banter back and forth, they figured out who was going to do their watches. And that did not include Ryu because he is blind, which we keep establishing over and over again. <laughs> if you don't know, Ryu is blind. So oh. Ryu got asleep. Yeah, yeah, he's blind. And uh, Geldir wasn't going to help out. He slept as well. And uh, Waltz, who was on third watch, had something happen in the night. Uh, He noticed uh, some leaves forming a chilling breeze, and these leaves formed a construct that resembled a humanoid form. And he questioned this construct, asked them who they were, and the construct said, Sindor. And that... Is where we ended our session. By the way, uh, when we recorded that, we had no idea Ryan was going to go so hard with the music. Um, so, yeah, <laughs> so good. good job, Ryan. That was I got the goosey awesome. bumps. Awesome. Super cool. <laughs> Thanks. So good. Super cool stuff. So that is where we ended our session. So as usual, that is where we'll start our session with Waltz facing off against Sindor in some form or fashion and the rest of the party is asleep. So Waltz, Sindor revealed who he is. What do you do? I immediately want to do a perception check um, and see how far away the party is from me. Um, they're within reaching distance um, and what I see around me because I feel like that would be something that took me back a lot and now I'm like pretty frightened and want to observe everything. And I got yeah. an 18. Great. Yeah, so... You had already been studying them quite a lot, uh, just being on watch, and you know that they're all within 15 feet of you. You weren't far at all. Um, They're behind you. You are in between them and Sindor. Okay. Can I also get a idea of what I see, like what Sindor's construct looks like? Yeah. So he is about seven feet tall in this form. The leaves are constantly churning, Although they're moving, it doesn't disrupt the overall humanoid figure. Um, He's faceless in this form, um, but you can see all of the limbs. And there seems to be two glowing green specks within the construct that are shifting back and forth and studying you, which you can tell seem to be his eyes in this state. Okay, I'll kind of take a half step back and pretty frightened. I'll keep my eyes on Sindor. I'll say, uh, hey, uh, guys, guys, you're, uh, you're gonna want to see this. Wake up. Everyone who is asleep, roll me a perception check. I do bad. And you're gonna do it with a minus two penalty because you are 19. (laughs) I do real bad. I got eight. One better than Ryu. All right. Dax, you start to blink um, mid-sentence. You kind of catch the the end of what Waltz was saying and sit up and observe Waltz standing in front of a makeshift 
abstraction of a humanoid form. The rest of you are still sleeping. <sighs> what? 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 Whoa, whoa! Whoa! What? What's going on? And I'll uh, grab a dagger. Uh, Dex, quick, wake up the guys. Yeah, I'll just reach over and start like hitting, hitting everybody if everybody I'm within reach of. Yeah, everyone's awake now. Geldir uh, sits up very quickly, stands up to his feet, and looks terrified. The entire time you've been interacting with Geldir, he's always looked very calm. Everything's a joke, very playful, not too worried, but he looks extremely unsettled in this moment. Uh, Ryu will shoot awake, shocked by being woken so abruptly in the night and kind of immediately draw his sword because that might just be my instinct. Uh, am I able to sense this figure with my aura or what would what, what I see? So first roll me a arcana check. Let's see, 25. Okay, so immediately you detect your companion's auras and you're trying to understand what's going on and you don't sense any other auras, but then a very different feeling you pick up on just the magical energy that seems to be in front of Waltz. What do I think of this energy? It feels magical. Um, You don't seem to be able to sense any emotion from it. It doesn't necessarily give you a bad or good vibe, but it does feel potent. Hmm. Who's here? This uh, thing says that it's Sindor. Thing? I'd imagine kind of at the same time as as Ryu standing up, Jules would stand up and uh, he slept with his trident nearby, just not fully trusting Geldir. So he stands up and he extends his trident and uh, hisses, just kind of ready to fight. So what's a little bit odd, like while you were all doing all that, the construct was just standing there observing very patiently, but you can see almost like it's breathing its shoulders, raising at a very slow and ominous pace. He's very calm, and its faceless head has been shifting, looking at each of you as you're reacting. Dax's eyes are kind of... He keeps going back and forth between Sindor and Geldir. It's weird to see Geldir nervous, so I mean, Dax already was kind of nervous about meeting Sindor to begin with, so seeing Geldir also scared or nervous or whatever is is just kind of adding fuel to that fire, so he's his eyes just keep darting back and forth between them. Waltz will look to Sindor and say, so uh, what exactly can we do for you, Sindor? You can leave Nisserine now. And why should we do that? Because your presence is a nuisance to me. And frankly, not worth the disruption it's causing. If I am forced to return to this island and address your slights, I promise you will not enjoy it. Then how would you suggest we leave? His head turns towards Ryu, and you notice a disruption in in the pace at which it was breathing. Its shoulders rise and hold for a moment, and then relax. Are you an Arakai? Uh, Ryu thinks for a moment. I am not. He starts walking towards you at a very direct angle and a brisk, powerful pace, closing the distance. Does anyone react in that moment? Be careful, Ryu. I get into a battle stance, prepared to slice. I'm still not even aware that this isn't a person in front of me. I'll step closer to Ryu. I'll grab my shield and join him as well. He stops about 10 feet from Ryu, and you see the head tilt down to his feet and up slowly. (sighs) You are an Erekai, so far from Desolus. And his head turns away and looks down towards the ground off to the side like he's thinking. Why are you here? Ryu, I think right now is potentially a little bit overwhelmed by the, the aura of Sindor, perhaps not expecting this much magical energy from an individual. And I'll just say, I didn't intend on coming here. Hmm. Even still, you being here is a complication. 
and he pans across the rest of you. What do you want? For starters, you can uh, leave the people of Karos alone. Hmm. No. Well, then I guess it's going to be difficult to come to a deal then, isn't it? Hmm. He looks up like he's thinking. And what exactly is it that you want, Sindor? You snap him from his pondering, and the head turns back to you and says, To give the people of Keldora what they crave most, the means to destroy themselves. By what means? There are many means to accomplish such a goal. In fact, I wouldn't have to do anything, though I'm not opposed to speeding the process along. So what exactly is your plan then? What's the deal with all these drakes? What's with all these nests? I feel like drakes were uh, pretty rare and in the past week or so I've run into them uh, non-stop. He studies you. He gets, he starts walking very close to you. He is gonna get within five feet of you. He's towering over you. He looks down and he sees your neck. Hmm. You are from Eisenhower? Uh, Billarod, actually, but yeah. Hmm. Interesting. The orcs, I take it? That's right. Hmm. Well, listen. As much as I would love to divulge my plans to you, I'm afraid I don't have the time, so... He looks back to Ryu, almost like his presence is affecting what he's going to say next, and then pans across the rest of you. I will afford you safe passage from here to Kyria. I promise you will not be attacked. The people of Karos will experience no further harm, but only if you turn around and never come back. Did you really expect that just by appearing before us and telling us to leave, that we would? Clearly you fear something. Why are you here? I assure you, boy, I do not fear the likes of Digsby's crew. I have tolerated this system since the displacement and lived even longer still. I've watched the endless bloodlust and destruction that transcends the ages. Your fleeting lives grant you the gift of ignorance, but I am not so lucky, so do not lecture me or attempt to intimidate me with mere words. You killed a river drake. Congratulations. The two remaining drakes are of far greater power, and that power is nothing compared to mine. A gauntlet lays before you. You are out of your league. Go home. If you have nothing to fear, then let's finish this now, and I'll slash my sword at him. You slash through the construct of leaves, and all that happens is some of the leaves fade away from the construct for a moment before reverting back to their original form, and he is completely unaffected. <laughs> Typical Erakai. Ryu, I don't think this is uh, really Sindor. I think it's a uh, construct created by Sindor. I think he's somewhere else. Ah, a mirage just isn't desolous. Listen, you rotting pile of weeds. <clears throat> Underestimating us is going to be your second biggest mistake. He slowly turns his head to Jules. I'm sure this is all rather fun for you. Killing drakes, liberating oppressed peoples. But humor me, and let's follow your noble quest to its ideal solution. You endure the harsh climates of Pagos and Gainmar. Kill two even stronger drakes. Lay siege to a fortified keep. Recover the Arcanor, a device you know nothing about, and defeat me. An ancient druid wielding eons of knowledge and power. Okay, but then what? Do you really think my schemes, my influences and allegiances are limited to the forgotten island of Nisserine? Should you disrupt my efforts, your naivety will ripple through all Keldora, and you will not like what it awakens. 
I say again, you're out of your league, Digsby's crew. Go home while you still can. And your days are numbered, Sindor. Hmm. And he slowly looks to Geldir. What are you doing here, Drake Knight? Oh, oh. Hey, yo, Sindor, uh... It's, uh... They've all... Taken me, uh... Hostage, <laughs> you see, I, uh... I tried to escape, I mean... You know, well... Hmm. So your fate will be the same as theirs, then? Uh, hold on, uh... Like I said, I, I, I tried to resist. They, they've brought me along, I promise. Uh, and then, Dax, you kind of do a double take. You notice a subtle gesture in the way that Keldir communicated. That reminds you of secret speech. And although the dialect of what he was doing with his gesture seems a little different from the way you did it back on Dracus, you sure. feel very confident that... He just conveyed the message sabotage through Uh-oh. his groveling to Sindor. And Sindor pauses and does another exhale. <clears throat> so you will not leave then? Sindor, what I don't think you understand is that none of us have anything to lose. <laughs> Very well. And the breeze rolls by one last time and the leaves fade and scatter across the grass in front of you and fall to the ground and then you see a little rune etch into a nearby tree of glowing green energy and flare for a moment and then retract and fade oh oh man oh oh guys we got really lucky there you should have taken him up on his offer Maybe you're right. Uh, I guess I guess we'll find out, huh? <sighs> you still want to do this? Like I said, what have I got to lose? He found us. He knows what we're up to. Uh, this is entirely different. This isn't sneaking behind his back anymore. This is his island. Uh, he's in complete control. Our only advantage was he didn't know what we were up to. Him knowing or not makes no difference to me. Well... Let him come. Ryu, you were kind of in tune with his energy because you had picked up on that arcane energy resonating from him. Mm -hmm. And although everybody else has let their guard down because the visualization of him is gone, you still feel like he was there in a way on that tree. Still here? It feels familiar to what you just experienced, what you were just sensing kind of like leftover energy or do i get the sense that he's still listening to us leftover in a Mm way Uh, i'll kind of take that in again and just be reminded of the feeling of his presence his aura was certainly not as i expected and certainly powerful there's a reason he showed up here tonight i feel he has something to fear out of our group i'm with you because if we weren't a threat why would he bother he'd just kill us when we got there or he would have killed us right now I get the sense his overconfidence is a feint. But Geldir, why do you say we should fear him so? Do you not see what he just did? This island is his. He can do things here that no one else can. He's in like tune with it. Like show up as a bush? <sighs> You're lucky he just showed up as Leaf's friend. Otherwise, you would have paid for your slights. This is no joke. What if we just get rid of all the leaves? <laughs> <laughs> then he can't come back <laughs> the, I wonder how many episodes that would take <laughs> just picking all the leaves one we're just raking two. leaves the rest of this podcast <laughs> three <laughs> four Darren's just tirelessly adding like leaf crunching noise Five. like over and over <laughs> and over again yeah. and they have to be That's different it so it Seven. doesn't sound the same every time <laughs> yeah. alright you guys start hearing a pinging sound Resonating from the tree, the rune is starting to flare at a consistent rate and increasing in rate, and the light is growing brighter 
and brighter and brighter. Everybody back up. Can everybody roll me initiative? No. No, do it. You got to do it. Oh. I refuse. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I'm a pacifist now. You're going to uh, regret yeah. making me roll initiative after I reveal <laughs> to you my my 23. 9-9! Nine, nine. <laughs> 17. Um, 17 as well. Rock, paper, scissors. I don't know about Pathfinder, but when I was looking up the Starfinder rules, for ties, you just roll again. And on D&D, I know it's different, but I don't know what Pathfinder's rules are. Yeah, D&D just gives it to the player every time if they tie with... um an NPC, and then if they tie with each other, they just give it to whoever has the highest initiative bonus. Right. So, Is it yeah, the same with Pathfinder? Uh, with Pathfinder, I think you just re-roll. I got 17, but I don't know who else did. Oh, I did you, as well. Okay. okay. You guys, uh, you guys you can roll, roll off two years ahead. Yeah. All right. 23. My second roll is a 16. So the rune bursts in a flare of light. Green sparks shoot upward and kind of rain down over some of the trees in the area. And in an instant, a vine lashes out from one of the trees at Waltz. And it's going to try and grab him. Waltz, does a 17 hit you? Negative, Ghost Rider. Well, so you whip around and see this vine coming at you, and it's clearly going for your arm, and you pull the arm out of the way, and it misses, and then retracts, and then as it was retracting, a second vine shoots for you. Does a non-nat 20 hit you? Yes. All right, so this second vine grabs your other arm and twists and restricts around it and lurches you a little bit closer to the tree, and then it starts to squeeze your arm extremely tight, and it's going to deal bludgeoning damage to you. I don't like that. I don't like that one bit. Did we, So sorry, did we say we have to get dressed then as one of our actions? Yeah. No, it takes like okay. way too much time. You can't like do it in a combat encounter. Okay, so, so I don't, we don't, none of us have armor on right yeah, now. Take so your correct. armor off on your character sheet. Okay, got it. Waltz, can you roll me a fortitude save? 17. Okay, so you flex your arm as much as you can trying to resist this restriction of the vine and you feel like you're overpowering it in a way but then it tightens even more and it seriously starts to crush your arm and it's going to deal nine bludgeoning damage to you. That's not cool. It's a lot of bludgeoning. Oh, guys, a uh, little help here and I'll keep uh, tugging my arm away and trying to resist that vine. Quick question. Uh, I want to know if I can even tell what's happening to Waltz right now. Are these creatures or whatever we're fighting right now, are they like thinking creatures? I'm just trying to figure out if my thought sense is able to sense them. Great. So it is your turn. So I will adjust that. The vines you wouldn't have necessarily picked up on. What you do pick up on is throughout the area where the magic rained down, various little shrubs and bushes are starting to wiggle and take a new form, and you're picking up on a very dim thought sense from these creatures. Got it. Waltz, what's going on? Uh, this vine's got me. Ryu, help. Come on, do something. Cut this vine or something, please. Oh, the bad guys are leaves. And then I'm going to... <laughs> <laughs> okay. Ree's really fixated on the fact that we're fighting leaves now. Uh, so for first action for my turn, I want to utilize my new skills that I earned whilst uh, gaining better control over my aura when I was over by the beach. And I again blast my aura around me, start to condense it around my body, and it solidifies slightly as this thick coating of aura around me, granting me mage armor, a level sp one spell that I'm casting. Cool. So Which is perfect, mage armor. Just quick reminder to the audience: everyone but Waltz does not have armor on because Waltz was on watch and everyone else was asleep. So super clutch mage armor, great use of it. Yeah. So I get plus one bonus to my AC. And then I also get a plus five to my dexterity modifier. Then I'm just going to take off towards the closest piece of shrubbery that I can find. Great. Yeah, there's one 10 feet away from you starting to form. You can hear the crackling of branches and leaves. And it almost sounds like bones cracking and wood splintering. And you start to hear... <laughs> Vines off, Waltz. 
like hands off, you know? <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, cool line. I don't like cool that. Line. I you know like, it's a cool line like... when we're all too stupid to understand it. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, you're moving towards the closest shrub, which oh, is. Oh, sorry, not... that's on my actions. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> okay, I was waiting. <laughs> okay. Uh, Can do great. on my next turn. <laughs> okay. All right, excellent. Eventually. <laughs> As always, Rhea's first turn is power it up. Power up episode, baby. <laughs> excellent. So, yeah, the nearest shrub to you has fully formed. So you guys, everyone but Ryu can clearly tell it has a also a humanoid structure. It has two big black eyes, uh, pupil just dominating the entire eye. It has almost like a cabbage-like face, sharp, jagged teeth, um, wood armor over it. It's formed with a wooden spear, and it starts running towards Ryu, laughing maniacally, and it is going to take a stab at Ryu and certainly miss. So it goes to stab right as your mage armor forms, and it clanks off this aura around you, and then it retracts, and its eyes grow even wider. It goes... And it's going to take a second stab. Ryu, does an 18 hit you? Uh, shoot. It does. All right. So it deals one damage. So it just kind of pokes you in the thigh. It really feels like a stick just stabbed you in the thigh. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> and it's going to try and stab one more time. And miss. So you kind of lift your leg up, and it, it's just frantically jabbing at your leg, laughing. That'll take us to Dex. Can you give me a quick rundown on distances? Um, like, how far am I from Ryu versus Waltz, please? Right. So you guys were in a full-on conversation, so they're all within about five feet of you. You guys are in a little bit okay. of a huddle. I thought so. And cool. then all of the enemies, so the, the tree was about 10 feet away from you guys. And then these four constructs, these little plant people... Um, formed almost in a square around you, and they're all about equidistance 10 feet. So you're all sort of in this little huddle. You can pretty much reach anyone that you'd want with a, a one-move action. And so the vines aren't are unrelated to these pe- the bush people? Yes, the vines are associated with a tree, and then okay, these plant so. okay. people are separate and appear to be a little Perfect. more mobile. You do realize that one of them is forming up in a tree from a branch. Okay, so knowing that Ryu is kind of one-on-one with this shrub, I will shove the bush thing, the entity that is interacting with Ryu. Okay, yeah. Um, Yeah, so I will do the shove action on the first one. Okay. That is a non-natural 20. That certainly works. And that was a normal success. So you push the creature five feet away from Ryu. And he goes, Ugh, Waltz, I'm coming. And then I will stride over to Waltz using my second action. And then I will I will try to cut at the vines with my sword, just kind okay. of in the middle. Great. That is a 17 to hit. So you go to chop the vine and it's almost like it can sense you were there. And it does this quick S like snake motion. And you actually miss on the swipe oh. and does not hit. Whoa, and then I'll just kind of look at my sword in my hand, shocked that I missed. And that'll take us to Waltz. So, Waltz, you are grabbed right now, so if you want to break free of that grab, you would have to spend an action trying to escape. Is it trying, is that aura on the tree still glowing? No, it's gone. It um, erupted and dispersed and is now is now gone. I want to do a, a search action, mainly looking for if there's anything magical that may be, like, powering these... Um, constructs. Okay, roll me a perception check. 12. Okay, so you're trying to look around, but every time you're trying to move your head, this vine is manhandling you around and you can't get a good grasp on what's around you. I'll uh, I'll just try and um, resist it then if uh, I can do either athletics or whatever it would be or another fortitude check to try and break free of the vines. Yes, yeah, so you can attempt a acrobatics or athletic check. Does it kind of have, like, my whole body, both arms, or, like, uh, I'm fully kind of restrained in this? It's wrapped around your arms, so to try and escape, you can try and use your unarmed attack modifier, or you can use acrobatics or athletics check. 
I'll use athletics. Okay. Ooh, nat 20, baby. Ooh, 28. Nice. Five Excellent. Goals. So <laughs> does Waltz flex his biceps so much that he bursts the vine, or is he Just a snaps. slip in it out sort of thing? <laughs> Your call, bro. I'm thinking maybe uh, I just kind of finesse it like I kind of understood from last time when I resisted that it kind of got tighter, but I saw a moment where it kind of relaxed, so maybe I try and trick it, right? Like I resist and wait for it to finally relax or think that I'm done and then slip out of it. Awesome. So almost like you time it with the S snake-like motion it used to dodge Dax's attack and you feel it loosen up and then you slide your arm out of it. Never okay. mind, Waltz. I, I should have known you'd, you'd handle it. Yeah, see, uh, it always works out, doesn't it? Um, and I have one more action, right? Yep. All right, so for my third action, I want to raise my shield. In the future, or what I want to prepare for now that I have my shield raised is to be able to use a reaction to aid if there's anything that I see is, that is going to attack one of my um, teammates within five feet of me. So if another vine shoots out or something, I don't know if I'd be able to use my aid in that way to help and resist. Um, Great. Is that yeah. fair? Okay. Cool. I'm cool. glad you're using your weapons and shield. <laughs> well, yeah, you haven't right. used your weapon yet, but I'm glad you're using your shield. Somebody quick, find find Waltz a random object. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so if you're a D&D player, just so you know, in Pathfinder, your shield is dynamic. You can decide to raise it. It is an action, and then that will boost your AC. So in D&D, your shield is just kind of always up, and it's not really a strategically used item. Um, but he has decided to raise his shield and use his equipment. Great job, Waltz. This is a growth Thank moment you. for you. So does that <laughs> does that AC boost stay till his, his next turn, or? It, yeah. Well, on his um, next turn, he would continue to raise it, yeah. Well, hold on. Let me verify that now that I know people get triggered and I get rules wrong. Uh... <laughs> Okay, so then that takes us to another one of these plant figures, which I'm now going to refer to as Leshies. So there is one up in the tree that starts to form out of a branch, and then it cracks its head and twists it around and goes, <laughs> and it jumps off the branch, and it starts to glide over the battlefield, and it's going to shoot two seeds out of a pod it has on one of its arms at Jules. So, Jules, the first one misses, so right away you see one coming at you. It fires this seed at you at a very high velocity, and you dodge out of the way, and it hits a tree in the background and explodes, and then it's going to shoot a second one, and it rolls a nat 20. Oh. Uh Uh-oh. Impossible. Okay. And deals 10 damage, so it hits you and explodes and splinters of seed fly out, and it releases this concussive sound. Can you roll me a fortitude save? Uh, that's a 21. All right. So it explodes and you feel oh. a little disoriented for a moment, but you shake your head and it's almost like hearing gunfire, something you're very used to. Um, so you're able to resist this deafening blow that it just shot at you. What was that? And it goes <laughs> and keeps gliding over the battlefield. And that'll take us to another Leshy that has formed out of the ground that sprints up to Dax and is going to try and stab him with his spear and hits. Can I say I use my aid to block that, or is that not how it works? No, you'd have to aid him in a check. And it deals six damage, so it stabs you pretty thoroughly in the thigh, almost pokes out the other side, and it pulls it out, but it's a very ah. precise spear, so it's not a huge wound that it left. Yeah, I would like to use Retributive Strike if I can, so the trigger for that would be that an enemy damages my ally and both are within 15 feet. I protect my ally and strike my foe. The ally gains resistance to all damage against the triggering damage, equal to two plus our level. So four. four. If the foe is within reach, make a melee strike against it. Okay, cool. So he stabs you, and when he pulls it out and you look down at your thigh and react that way, Dax, you see it starts to heal a little bit in front of you, almost reminiscent of how you saw Waltz heal Ryu uh, the Mm -hmm. first time in the cart. And then, Waltz, you can make an attack. I'll use my shield as a weapon and bash it if I can and just say I'm using my shield as an improvised weapon if I can because I don't have a shield boss or spike. Okay. 15. That misses. So you see the Leshy tilt its head like, huh? And then it looks over at you, 
it sees the shield coming and it pops its head down into its wooden body and you swipe over it and just miss its head and it pops its head back out. And that'll take us to Jules. How high up is the leashy that attacked me in the air? It's 20 feet above you. Okay. I'll kind of time it so when he's just above me, I'll cast sleep Okay. on him. It's a 30 foot range. So, uh, I mean, anything that's in the area would have to make this save, but since he's in the air, I'd like to cast it like up. Uh, cool. Yeah, if it's uh, if it's anything that's 30 feet within range, that would affect Ooh. everything. Clever. But I want to shoot it up so that it's it's just the one in the sky, because otherwise we'd all have to, or like, oh, oh, have to. you're saying any? It doesn't just say hostile creatures. Each creature in the area becomes drowsy oh, okay, and might okay. fall asleep. So, but it's a five foot, the area is a five foot burst, but the range is 30 feet. So I want to sh- target the, the one, just the one in the air. Okay. Is that possible? Yeah. You can will target you just the one it? in the air for sure. Yeah. You could aim it cool, like cool, a little cool, bit cool, above cool, him. Cool. So I'll do that. It says it makes a will saving throw. Okay. It got a 21. Man, these guys are good. Yeah. They are good. So um, does that succeed? Yes. Okay. So you raise your hand up to cast this spell and it goes, uh oh. It pops its limbs back into its wooden body and does a little spin in the air right as you cast it that protects it, and then it pops its limbs back out and continues gliding. Okay. It does have a negative one status penalty to perception checks for one round. Okay. Got you. These little guys are goofy. They are. They're little <laughs> buggers, um, man. So we should take one with us. Since it did that, Jules will hiss, uh, cast shield, okay. which is a cantrip, a new cantrip. So I basically have... Uh, magical shield force. Uh, Jules looks like uh, misty sea, kind of a seafoam green um, energy. And uh, I have a plus one to my AC until the start of my next turn. Perfect. So I'll do that. And for my final action, I'll look around and whichever one's closest to me. Is there one like relatively close? The one flying or what was I pretty move? close to you, but the two others that have already joined the fight are all within 10 feet of you. Okay. Um, I'll take my boarding axe out and throw it at the one at Dax. 16. To attack? Yeah. That misses. (laughs) Well, there goes my boarding axe. (laughs) Okay, so you throw the axe and it rotates around, kind of sticks its butt out, and it just sticks an axe into its back, its wooden back, and it turns around and goes, (laughs) like it just absorbed it. So goofy. I'll just scream at at them out of frustration. Just ah! <laughs> and one more leshy forms and will also run up to Jules, who has his back turned attacking the other leshy, and he is going to try and stab him and miss and miss again. So you just let out a scream at that other leshy, and then you hear footsteps coming behind you. And you quickly whip around and use your trident to block two little jabs from this wooden spear. Come on! And that'll take us to the vine that has been attacking Waltz. Another set of vines are going to shoot at you. So two incoming vines. The first one definitely misses. So you lift your shield up and it pings off your shield. And you lower it again to see if anything else is coming. And a second vine is flying right at you. And... Does a 19 hit you? That is my AC, so yes. Oh, no. Nine damage, and it's going to grab you as well, so it wraps around your arm again. Oh, you got to be kidding me. And that takes us to Ryu. I am going to attack this Leshy in front of me. I'm going to use my spell strike combined with this gouging claw and attack. 17. That misses. Ugh. So you swing your sword, and it rolls on the ground and then stands back up and goes, "Eh, eh, eh." Mm. Just you wait until next time, plant. And then I enter into my arcane cascade, which gives me extra temporary hit point between turns, and if I can actually hit this thing, an extra one damage. Awesome. Is that the end of your turn? turn. Yes. All right. That takes us to the one that just rolled in front of you, and it is going to turn around and run away and start... Climbing a tree. You get back here, you. No. And keeps climbing. And that'll take us to... Gotcha. (laughs) You suck. 
Jeez. It takes us to <laughs> takes us to Dax. That's okay. more frightening than Sindor. Oh, that's incredible. <laughs> I am going to uh, attempt to trip the one that's with me. Athletics check. That is a 22. That succeeds. Okay. Come here, you little rat. And then I'll trip him <laughs> and go for a stab with my dagger. Awesome. See so yeah, how you tripped him on the ground as he was trying to stab at you another time. So you kind of sweep your foot, do like a sweeping kick, and take it off its feet. And it is now on the ground. And then what kind of, I, I'm not positive, what kind of bonuses do I get for him being prone? Yeah, so since he is prone, he is flat-footed, and he'll take a minus two circumstance penalty to attack rules, and he'll have to crawl or take a stand action. The short sword's the only weapon I grab, because I imagine when this all broke down, I just grabbed my sword, right? I'm not going to kid up or anything, so all I've got is my short sword, which is what I used on the vines. So, oh, it was on 20 for a second. Um, That (laughs) is still a 26 to hit. That hits. Almost a crit, but not. Oh, dang it. I was hoping mm. I might sneak that in there. Okay. So that is 11 damage. Awesome. So you go to swing and you hack into it and it chops off one of its arms and it almost looks like it doesn't feel any pain and goes, ah, what the? Ah. I'm going to, I think I'm just going to do it again. I'm going to hack at the other arm, even though I get okay. the negative. A 17. Just barely misses, so you go to swing at the second arm, and it pulls it back into its body, and then pops it back out right as after you're done swiping. Okay, and that'll take us to Waltz. I want to do another perception check. I need to find what the weak spot of these vines would be, or how to stop these vines if I can. Yeah, so you could do a recall knowledge about this creature. Um, so it's sixteen. All right, so you're doing an unspecified lore check against this. Um, currently, and you're not really familiar with this creature. You've never really encountered one, but you're understanding that you're being attacked by vines in a tree, uh, and you follow the vines to the tree and realize it's connected to a tree. So it's not really going to be able to move necessarily. So if you can get out of reach of the vines, then it can't really do anything. Gotcha. Okay. I'll, uh, use my next action as an athletics check to try and get out of its grapple or grasp. Okay. Walt, stop playing with the vines. Oh, I'm trying, buddy. 13. Okay, so that fails. So you're trying to squirm and get out, but it's tightening even further on you. It knows that you've escaped once, and it is being extremely constrictive on your arm. Okay. Um, I feel like I'm pretty limited, so I guess... You could try and escape twice. Yeah, that's what I'll do. I'll do that again. Okay. Or you can raise your shield, 20, too. That's the other 25. I, don't, I feel like I wouldn't be able to if I'm, you know, being cool. grappled like this, though. So. Okay. So you kind of bash your shield into the vine a little bit to try and get it to move and wriggle around and react, and it loosens up a little bit, and then this time you're able to slip your arm free, and you have escaped the constrictive vines. Gotcha. Okay. Awesome. So the Leshy that was just hacked at by Dax screams and wriggles on the ground and then stands up from prone using an action and then conjures its spear again out of wood and it's going to stab at you. Definitely miss and definitely miss. Got to do better than that, bud. (laughs) It's just frantically stabbing at you. And that'll take us to the one that is flying through the air that banks and starts to steer around the battlefield and see Dax getting the better of one of the Leshies, and it's also going to fire a seed pod at him. Does a 19 hit you? Oh, it does. Okay, so it hits you, erupts, and makes a loud noise, dealing two damage, so you're almost able to block some of it with your sword, and it kind of slices around, but then the shrapnel hits you and makes a loud noise. Can you make a fortitude save? 24. Nice. All right. So Hot when your dice. sword made contact with it and it split, it definitely dissipated some of the sound. So its concussive blow wasn't as loud as it would normally be, and you're able to resist its effects. Oh, oh, oh. you guys are clever. That'll take <laughs> us to Jules. So I'll turn to the Leshy that just tried to attack me, and I'd like to attempt to trip it. Okay. 
That is a 19. That succeeds. So that's a normal success. So you're going to swipe your foot, take it off balance, and it lands on its back. If you critically succeed in a trip, it will also take bludgeoning damage from hitting the ground. But that was a normal uh, success. Gotcha, gotcha. Uh, I'd like to actually use my trident Ooh, to just sweep, even sweep under better. his feet. Yeah, so you sweep your trident, take it off its feet, lands on its back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then I do a little flip at the trident above my head to get it facing him, holding it above it above my head. I say, I swear I will turn you into kindling. And then I'll stab down on top of him with my trident. Awesome. Nice. Splinters some of the wood. Roll your attack roll. That is a 24. Perfect. Yeah, roll your damage, man. Uh, that's five. Awesome. Yeah, you stab down, it splinters some of the wood out, and you go, Argh! and you deal five damage, and you can tell you definitely made an impact on it. And hey, listeners, Sweet. my dog is eating some food right now, and Joel's a great editor, but sometimes, you know, you're going to pick up some weird sounds. <laughs> so if you hear some crunching in the background, that's my dog <laughs> eating food. Okay, I got one more. After I've stabbed him with my trident, uh, I'll activate shield once more. Cool. So yeah, the aura forms around you again, the shimmering aquatic looking shield. And that'll take us to that leshy that you just stabbed with your trident. And it looks extremely angry and it will try and stab you with its spear. Bring it on. And it definitely misses. So it clanks off your trident and then <laughs> it gets really <laughs> mad. And then it's gonna run up and just try and tackle you to the ground. So it's going to try and trip you. All right. How big are these things? They're pretty small. <laughs> They're about knee high. <laughs> it's like, yeah, like runs up to you. Uh, and then nah. it goes to tackle really your knee. Hope it doesn't you kind of just stick your foot out very firmly and it yes. clanks off your knee and does nothing. And then it shakes its head like, <laughs> and then it looks back up at you. It's sad that, that we're having such a hard time with these. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, I mean, they're hard to hit. I think they sound they so are. cute. Yeah, their AC uh, for Pathfinder, though, isn't actually that high. It's, like, pretty low, we'll like, by D&D <laughs> standards. I don't know, you guys. It's just not the best night rolling, I guess. <laughs> um, and that'll take us to the vines on the tree. So, Waltz, you just realized you needed to get away from it, but it's going to do its best to stop you from doing that. And it's <laughs> going to lash out at you again, my man. <laughs> And absolutely miss once more. So this time you didn't raise your shield, so you duck under it as it snakes to try and grab you. And you know the second one's coming. And even worse. And then, so this one's going for your leg, and you lift your leg up as you duck over the first one and dodge both of these. And it's going to do one third desperate sweeping strike at you. And absolutely miss so this time you just grab it with your hand and then throw it to the side and you dodge three vine attacks from this tree good fall Walt yeah I'm getting sick of this thing that's so good actually <laughs> I'm getting sick I'm of getting all of sick these of things it, <laughs> Ryu it's your turn ah oh, finally I, <laughs> I love my turn <laughs> I love yeah, my turn I love my turn <laughs> Ryan loves his turn I stride on over to Dax and I say the one I was fighting t- poked me and ran away, so I'm fighting yours now, Dax. <laughs> I don't think Dax says anything. <laughs> He's concentrated. <laughs> I take a big overhead swing on top of this little man. All right. I'm using my spell strike. Oh, wait, no, I have to recover that first, so I'll just do a normal swing. Okay. 23. That hits. Nice. Die plant. 15 damage. Ryu comes up says his line does a big overhead swing and like a lumberjack chopping wood just hacks this thing into splits splinters fly everywhere it explodes it goes and then all the magic fades out of it and it's clearly dead and all the other ones go what thanks Ryu. you're welcome i feel better good fall and then i use my last action to recharge my spell strike excellent great turn And that'll take us to the leshy that was climbing the tree. It makes it to the top, stands on one of the branches, and it's like, has its finger out like, you, jumps off, starts gliding through the air. It raises its seed pod and it's gonna shoot at Ryu. As I was saying, Dex, these things can't hurt me at all. (laughs) And it certainly misses. So as you're standing there completely 
blind and talking to Dax, it just misses you. <laughs> it hits the ground and makes a loud noise. You didn't like dodge it or anything. And it's gonna shoot a second one. Oh my gosh. And it nat ones. <laughs> hey -o. Yeah, so this time it shoots. Let me roll a percentage die. Uh, hey, listeners, look. Uh, we've been hearing some things maybe people don't always love our homebrew rules, but we love awesome nat 20s and fun nat 1s that do crazy weird stuff. Woo! That's how we play. So sometimes when we it's roll the rule nat of fun, one, man. I roll a percentage die, and when I'm doing that, uh, I say, hey. We all dance. If they roll low on the percentage and get a nat 1, I'll make something super crazy kooky happen. Something that benefits our players. I love cookies. If they cookies roll act. high on the percentage die, I'll be like, hey, you know, that it just wasn't a good turn. You know, I'll just move on. But that's what you I'm go, doing girl. right now. You go, girl. Get kooky. Yeah, I'm going to get kooky. <laughs> and he rolls really bad on the percentage die. So he <laughs> shoots it. So, Ryu, I picture you getting tuned in when you heard the first shot. And you go, oh, wait, hold on. And then you turn around and deflect the second one with your sword, like, broadside of it. Uh, so you don't cut it. And it ricochets off. And it's going to hit one of the other leshies that was on the ground <laughs> over by Jules. There we go. Because the only thing that can defeat these things is themselves. Are themselves. <laughs> uh, <laughs> hey, Ryan, roll a d6, man. Yes, ma'am. All right, Zach. Hey. All right, six is the one with six sides, right? Uh, I got a four. That is correct. You got a four? If mm. you see a seven, you've gone too far. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so Jules, the one that you just were standing in front of and you formed that shield and you're getting ready to fight, you just suddenly heard uh -huh. ping, ping, like ricochet sound and then it gets hit by a seed pod and explodes and makes a loud noise right in front of you. Roll me a fortitude save just to make this even crazier. <laughs> <laughs> oh no. <laughs> Zach's trying to make a point now. Uh, mm -hmm. 10. 10. So it erupts super loud and deafens you, uh, so you can't hear anything. You just hear ringing in your ears. But it did. <laughs> We're gonna have every handicap. The leshy in front of you. <laughs> so two leshies taken out by Ryu. Great job. We should end this fight quickly. What? <laughs> what? I said we should end this fight quickly. <laughs> what? Who's saying what? <laughs> And then the leshy that was in the air just goes, oh, sorry, and uh, banks and starts flying a different direction, and that'll take us to Dax. <laughs> All right, so <clears throat> having Ryu just completely destroy this one, <laughs> Ryu, you continue to surprise me, man. And then I will run, I will stride over to Waltz um, in these vines, and he he is not constricted right now. He, there's no vines on him. Right, but they're still over there. I would assume. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yep. Um and. This isn't a creature, right? They're just vines, magical vines. Mm-hmm. Okay. So I will simply, it's kind of boring, but I'm just going to hack at it with my short sword because... Okay. That is 26. That hits. Yeah. Take that, vines. Can vines be flat-footed? <laughs> <laughs> Not these oh, vines. Aw, bummer. That is five damage. Hey, man, it's better than no damage. Facts. So yeah, you swing your sword and hack into the vine and you leave a little divot in it and it retracts in pain, but then returns to its original position. I'm just gonna do it again, I guess. I don't, All right. I wanna get these vines done so Waltz can stop 1v1ing vines. <laughs> Ooh, that is, uh, that's only 11. All right, so yeah, you go to hack at the same vine, but then a second vine comes in and pushes your sword out of the way mid swing and blocks it. Is that the end of your turn? Yeah. All right. And that'll take us to Waltz. So Waltz, keep in mind you have gained the information that you feel like you can just get out of this vine's mm -hmm. reach, uh, but you have not conveyed that to anyone. Um, just making sure you understand that. Yeah, yeah. Um, what else do I see around me? What else is, are, like, how far are the other two creatures away from me? Is there just two left now? Yeah, so three? there is uh, two in the air, and the two on the ground were destroyed. Okay. Um, how high in the air are they? They're about 20 feet in the air. Are they, are they just like free gliding? Like they can go wherever they want or do they have a certain trajectory? They seem to be able to change position and kind of glide, but it's a very lazy speed. It's not super fast by any means. You can tell they're just capturing air beneath them and gliding. Gotcha. Okay. Um, I'm going to take a step and get away from these vines and I'll say, hey, uh, Dex. I don't think these vines are worth fighting. Let's take care of these other two. Just get away. All right. Sounds good. And I'll grab that knife that I took from Dunadast 
and butchering the um, drake. And I would like to throw that thing at one of the little leshies gliding in the air. All right. Do it, my man. Okay. Um, so just for clarification, taking out new weapons is a manipulate action. And yeah, no Waltz, problem. you did specify that you stepped away from the mm-hmm. vines. I just want to clarify, you don't necessarily always need to step because not everything has attack of opportunity ability. So Okay, so either could, way, I would need to move away, though, because I'm in yeah, range. that's true. So you could just do a regular movement without fear of attack right. of opportunity most of the time. Okay, mm-hmm. I'll do I'll do that and just get uh, as you know far away from that as I need to and get in good range underneath one of the things that are gliding. Cool, yeah. Okay, um... I'll give you a roll. Nat 20, dude. Yes. Yay. Yeah. Let's go. Nice. Very cool. I almost feel so like 24. Walt's maybe back in the butcher shop with his brother. They used to th- play with throwing daggers or something. Oh, absolutely. 100%. He heartfelt. would throw them at my head with like an apple on my head. <laughs> I would just kind of stand there. You know? the one that I definitely picture Walt and his little brother fork. always doing things <laughs> yeah. where they could get killed for fun. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah. it'll work out. All right, yeah. so I take out this uh, knife that Dunadas let me keep, and I just, in a angry manner, these things are ticking me off, and I'll launch it, wing it at this thing. All right. And for damage, I think it's just 1d4, but one of those is maxed out, you say? No. Uh, you can roll three of them. Again, a homebrew rule. If we nat 20 crit, we do double the damage die plus one, because bra, we just bra. like to have fun here, and that's what we're doing. Okay, so first one is, and I add a modifier for each of these, or no? Yes. Okay. But we'll four. just do just for two, though, not the third one. But yeah, in Pathfinder, for each one, you add your modifier. Okay, so that's um, 17. Whoa, really? Yeah. Wow. Nine plus four plus four. I got plus four strength, baby. All right, so this is the one that just shot its friend, and it said sorry, and it banked away. And right as it turned, you throw the dagger, and it didn't have time to suck its head in, and you split its little cabbage head completely in half. Does like a sh- and splits open. It loses all momentum, falls out of the sky, goes limp, and reverts back into a normal plant. Oh That's God. how it's done there, Jules. You don't need no fancy pistol. Just throw these bad boys. And that'll take us to the other leshy that's in the air. And it is going to start banking back towards Jules. <sighs> And it is going to fire a seed pod, and it misses, and misses again. Uh-huh. So it's doing almost uh-huh. like a, like a, this is my final attack run thing. It's like, nah, and it shoots two or three times, and it's like, doom, 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 and they're just exploding around you, and you're dodging all of them, even though you're deaf right now. <laughs> uh, so <laughs> it's not able to concuss you any further, because you already can't hear, and it takes us to your turn, Jules. Jules, quick, use your fancy pistol. <laughs> What? <laughs> yeah, not that he can uh, hear anything. <laughs> so uh, I'll take my trident and just throw it at him. Nice. Right. That is a 15. That misses. All right. Bye-bye, trident. <laughs> <laughs> so you throw the trident. It banks out of the way and sails through the air and goes, whoa, and then looks back at you. That was just a distraction. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> because now I... <laughs> We'll shoot a magic missile at it Perfect. for two. All right. Even though if I'd done that in the first place, it would have hit. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but it looks cool. <laughs> the next episode will be Jules looking for his trident. <laughs> uh, no. <laughs> Darn it. Where'd it go? It's Gildy five hours long. It. <laughs> Benjamin shows up with it. <laughs> hey. There it is. Hey, it's Jules. It. He just comes out of the brush with it. Here you go, bud. <laughs> Shouldn't you be on the boat? What? Oh, yeah. yeah. God, I gotta go. <laughs> Straight arm runs home. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, that's four damage. All right. So as it looks at your trident and then looks back, you have two magic missiles there to meet it. It pelts it in the chest. Um, it kind of crisps some of its cabbage head a little bit, and it goes, <laughs> and it keeps flying at you. And then two arrows come out of the brush and Whoa. pelt this flying leshy in the head, splitting its cabbage open. It hits the ground, slides, and you look over and you see Geldir and he lowers his bow. What? Whoa. Oh. Gelly, you son of a gun. Looked like you needed some help there, Jules. You pitched your trident into the tree line. 
great going. So since I'm no longer deafened, I'll uh, hear him say that. It's about time you showed up. Where uh, have you been this whole time? Well, I was in, uh, in the brush over there, getting an advantageous position. Looks like it paid off, didn't it? Advantageous position? Well, yeah. How long, how, how much time did you need? Well, a round of combat's only six seconds, apparently. So, <laughs> I don't know. We've been at this for hours. <laughs> <laughs> I like how Geldir's slowly become the meta character to address rules. I've done this like way more times than I thought. Um, About 24 seconds, I would say. <laughs> if you ask me, you were playing the coward until the end of the fight. I'm with Ryu here. Seems mighty convenient that you showed up. When Call you it what you want, but let's do some tally in here. Looks like the blind fella here killed two of them. Uh, the dumb one here killed one, and I hey. killed another. So, looks like Dax and Jules are the ones that didn't pull their weight. Ryu puts his hand on Jules. He's deaf, not dumb. Ryu, I can hear you now. I just look at him. <laughs> no, right. you don't. <laughs> With your eyes? Looks the wrong way. <laughs> <laughs> look, Jules, you can get mad at me for saving your life later. But I think we should get out of here considering Sindor knew we were camping here. What do you say we take this on the road? Yeah, I think that's a good idea. I think we should get out of here. I hate that you're right. And then I'll walk over to my armor and start putting it on and getting all my stuff picked up. Yeah, I won't say anything to him. I'll just walk by him and give him angry eyes as I'm grabbing my trident and my boarding axe. I will also grab that (laughs) knife out of the one that I stuck it in. And I feel like you're all being careful to stay out of range of the vine tree. <laughs> you're kind of like, whoa, yeah. whoa, whoa. I get grabbed again. <laughs> Maybe it snaps a couple times trying to reach you. Ugh, enough waltz with the tree. Yeah, I'm trying there, Ryu. Seems to come out of nowhere, I guess. I'd imagine we're all like putting our armor on now and mm-hmm. getting ready to set off again. Okay. Um, can you all roll me a perception check real quick? Aye, aye, Captain. Hey, that's my thing. Oh, yeah. <laughs> 15 for Jules. 14. 18. 22. Nice, Ryan. Thank you. Ryan. Dang it, I shouldn't have even had Ryu roll, actually, (laughs) because it doesn't really apply to him too much. Oh, wait. Uh, We'll say it does. Ryu, so you have thought sense, and you're picking up a lot of stress coming from Geldir's thoughts. It's just a bad vibe. And then Waltz, Mm -hmm. you pick up maybe on some of his mannerisms. Uh, As you're all putting your gear on, he's having shaky breath and... Just looks very stressed out, um, but you see him take a moment when he thinks maybe no one's looking to compose himself and gives himself an assuring nod and walks up and he goes, well, I hope you all got enough sleep because we got to get going. Ryu will take note of Galdir's demeanor, but not say anything right now. Yeah, I'm just kind of observing him at this point. All right, guys, let's let's get out of here before anything else shows up, eh? Yeah, Dude, sounds that. good. We'd best make our way. All right, yeah, let's go. And he starts walking, and he seems like he's moving very briskly now. He suddenly has urgency that you didn't detect before. Uh, As you recall, he was very lazy and nonchalant, but he seems way more adamant about where he's going. He must have had coffee. (laughs) He's just uh, crop dusting you guys the whole time. (laughs) (laughs) Very familiar. (laughs) All right, so you guys travel for... A couple hours, you're making great pace. You see off in the distance the vista of Pagos growing closer and closer and closer. Um, And Geldir takes a moment, goes a little bit off the path he was following, and starts heading down into some brush. Where's Geldir going? Hey, uh, where are you going? Well, were you planning on strolling through Pagos dressed in that? You turn into an icicle right quick. So where are you going? And he goes down into the brush, and you see there's some shrubs over. Uh, a, there's some shrubs covering something, and he starts to throw them off. And then you see a chest, and he opens it up, and he goes, "Drake knights go between region to region from time to time. I'm not going to carry one of these coats around, Enoch. Certainly not, Gain Ma." He opens it up, and there's some coats in there. And he grabs clearly the nicest looking one and puts it on and zips it up. And he goes, help yourself. Walks off. What? What? It, what is it? Breathe. What? It's, uh, it's, it's a some warmer clothing. Coat. Oh, yeah, it's like You're... an extra layer of clothing that keeps you warmer uh, in colder climates. You're going to need it. What do you know? You have made yourself useful, Galdir. Yeah, 
I mean, saved Jules' life, led you to Pegos, got you a coat. Look at me. I told you we'd be friends eventually. Hmm, okay. I'll, uh, walk over and grab a coat. Um, I imagine it'll be a little bit too big for me. I think there's a goblin one in there. You could try that. What did you say? I said, said I think there's, there's a, a goblin Yeah, there's a there. goblin one in there. What? I look over to Dax's aura very suspiciously. <laughs> PPP! <laughs> <laughs> look, Ryu, I don't like it either, but uh, it's all we got. And so I'll, I'll put it on. I'll go grab my coat and, uh, as I am putting it on, I'll look to Gildir. Let's get one thing straight. You didn't save my life. Whatever, man. I'll keep that in mind next time you look like you're in a pickle. How about that? Sounds wonderful. I'll just let you toss all your weapons into the tree line. Gives you a little pat on the shoulder. Will you guys stop bickering? We gotta go. I agree with the little lizard man. Waltz will grab his coat, throw it on, and kind of make for the road. I put mine on and look to Waltz. How do I look? <laughs> Not with your eyes. <laughs> oh, <laughs> with my brain. You look adorable. Yeah, you look like you're definitely not going to be as cold as you would have in your previous uh, attire, so. I do feel cozier. <laughs> Perfect. That's what we're going for. Rolls his eyes. All right, y'all ready? Let's go. All right. And he turns around. You walk for just a little bit longer, and you approach this clear, distinct line between Pagos and... And Enoch, you are standing on perfect, beautiful, summer-like grass, and there's this very hard line that shifts to Arctic terrain. You can see a, a subtle shimmer as you get closer to this line, and Galdir looks back and he goes, might want to zip those up. And he takes a step and crosses the threshold to Pegos, and that is where we'll end our session. Yes. Yeah. All hey. right. Hey, look at us making progress, transcending regions, getting in a fight, doing some role play, and progressing the story. We're so efficient. Excellent. Hey, thank you for joining us, listeners. We are so glad to have you. It means absolutely so much to us. We are so grateful. Thank you for being part of this community. Check us out on Reddit, Instagram, and Patreon, and also YouTube. And I think we have plans in the future to make some uh, other types of YouTube videos related to tabletop RPGs. So don't forget to subscribe to that if you want to see what I look like and ruin your immersion. Because I don't know what you're picturing, <laughs> but I promise I'm uglier than that. So get He's ready. beautiful. <laughs> yeah. All right. Um, yeah, first I want to thank Joel for his awesome editing. He does a tremendous job. It's super, 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 super tedious. Uh, I also want to thank your wife, man, because she lets you stay up all night and do all this editing and uh, all that stuff. So just tell her thank you from all of us. And uh, I also want to thank... Hoodies. <laughs> yeah, and for our hoodies. She made us for these really cool hoodies. Hey, we're going to make merch soon. Don't worry about it, guys. And uh, Taryn, thank you for your editing and your awesome sound effects you have been doing such a great job and like i don't know about you but some of these episodes sound like an audiobook the way you do it and it just gets me so immersed so thank you so much because uh you just paint such a vivid picture with all your work and we really appreciate it thank you adam for your awesome artwork if you haven't seen it yet follow us on instagram and reddit and all that stuff what are you doing you need to see this it's beautiful it's so freaking cool i love it he just keeps adding to it and also if you are a patron you can see his session sketches which you get a vote on and you can tell him what you want him to draw to commemorate the session it is awesome adam you're so talented thank you man oh, and thank you. thank you ryan for your amazing music ryan has i love been my like, turn <laughs> he loves his turn <laughs> this is his, he loves his turn for your, thank you yeah so ryan has been getting all these like cool plugins uh i don't understand all that works uh i'm an idiot i don't make music but he's been getting all this stuff that allows him to do like more instruments and like chorus stuff like what you heard with uh Sindor's reveal and things like that so he's just been going dope. hard he's been like investing in this he's been doing all this amazing stuff to make this a better product and hopefully enhance your experience so thank you ryan it is awesome we really really appreciate it and of course as always I already said it, but want to say it again. Thank you, listeners. We love you. And uh, we'll happy, see you next... What? Happy episode 10. Yeah, ha well, I think this huh? will actually be episode 11 because we're going to put in your origin. Uh, yeah, so everything oh, we, when we wow. called episode 9, episode 9, it'll actually be 10. Whatever. People are confused enough. It doesn't matter. They're not even listening, <laughs> actually, because this is the thank you segment and they turn it off. And that's totally understandable. Uh, but I got I to gotta thank my crew anyway. Anyway, we'll see you next time, mortals. We're all so cute in our matching you guys, and matching roles. Right. I, yesterday playing D&D, &D, had advantage on a roll, and I doubled nat 20 Nice. Oh, 
your wife is nice to so you, just, letting yeah. you play two different campaigns. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. Dude, did you just it win the exhausting. campaign then when you did that double net 20? Uh, it was an intimidation <laughs> check. I feel like if, if someone has to roll a disadvantage and gets two net 20s, they should win. Just the campaign. The campaign's done. Yeah. <laughs> you did it. It's like, what do you, what do you want to happen? Like, you're the, you're the DM now. <laughs>